The Yamaguchi Gumi is Japan's largest mafia. Many find it hard to believe, but is it actually a legal organization? Whereas members of the mob in countries like the US may hide what they do for a living, members of the Yakuza carry business cards and can be found in the phone book. They go to no effort to hide their gang affiliation. In order to join the Yamaguchi Gumi, you have to take a written exam, and members even have pension plans and register with the police. It has 23,400 members. The group is led by Kenichi Shinoda. One of the easiest ways to recognize a Yakuza is by the severed fingers they often have. When a member makes a mistake, they are required to cut off one of their fingers to make up for it. Taxi fleets, construction companies, insurance companies, as well as prostitutes and assassination are all businesses where Yakuza involves themselves in. But how did the Yakuza become so powerful? Where did they come from? Let's delve into this now. The Yakuza we know today originated from two groups, Tekia, peddlers, and Bakuto, gamblers. The Yakuza originated in the Tokugawa Shogunate, which lasted from 1603 to 1868. They were originally a destitute group of travelling merchants who sold cheap goods. Tekia were looked down on by Japanese society at the time. But gamblers were seen as being even lower. Gamblers would occupy abandoned shrines and temples at the outskirts of villages and towns. They used these abandoned buildings as gambling houses, which many would have thought was disrespectful. The term Yakuza means eight, nine, three. The worst hand in a Japanese game, similar to Baccarat. The practice of tattooing their bodies is known as Irizumi. In the past these were hand-poked, which was an unbearably painful process. In the early 1700s, they began to organise themselves, electing leaders. Many of these leaders were outcasts from the upper class. They started to take part in criminal activities, including protection rackets and turf wars. During the Edo period, these groups became recognised by the government and their bosses were even allowed to carry katanas, which was normally something only the nobility were allowed to do. This was a sign of their growing power. The Yakuza reached the height of their power through the black market after World War II. At this point, there were 180,000 Yakuza. The Yamaguchi Gumi was founded in 1915 by Yamaguchi Harukichi, and the group became a major force after World War II, while it was led by Taoko Kazuo. The gang can be traced back to a labour union for dock workers in Kobe, before World War II ever started. It hadn't grown much by the time Kazuo inherited the organisation. It only had a few dozen members by then. They might not have even imagined that they'd one day have tens of thousands of members. Tauka encouraged his followers to start their own legitimate businesses and also allowed them to start families. This made the organization much wealthier and increased its numbers quite a bit as the families they started became a part of the Yamaguchi Gumi. These policies and his leadership made it the largest mafia in Japan before he died. However, the group's success would soon turn into disaster. After Tauka's death, Kenichi Yamamoto took charge, but he was still in prison. And while he was still in there, died of liver failure. This led to inner turmoil over who would become the next leader, which broke out into all-out warfare when Masahisa Takanaka became the group's leader. Hiroshi Yamamoto split off from the Yamaguchi Gumi and started his own group, the Ichiwa Kai, 
taking thousands of members with him. The war between them lasted from 1985 to 1989 and involved over 220 shootouts. The Yamaguchi Gumi eventually won the war, but they lost important members, some through shootings and many through the ensuing police crackdowns in response to the war. Now the war had finally ended, Yoshinori Watanabe was elected as the new Kumicha. He was the fifth leader of the organization now. He was a well-respected and influential leader of the Yamaguchi Gumi. Strangely, he retired, which is contrary to most Yakuza bosses, who normally only retire when dead. For the next eight years, they couldn't manage to elect a leader, until 2005, when they finally elected Kenichi Shinoda. Under his rule, they absorbed the Kokusui Kai, a gang based in Tokyo, bringing them in a lot of money. One of the most terrifying traditions of the Yakuza is Yobitsumi. Yakuza members go through this when they make a mistake. Yobitsumi is the act of cutting off one of your fingers, normally the pinky. The pinky is then given to their boss to prove their regret and loyalty to the group. Another theory behind it is that without their pinky, they cannot wield a sword as well as they used to, and so they have to rely more on the group the Yakuza in the modern day is still incredibly powerful, even though their membership has declined since their height. The modern day Yakuza is seen as a chivalrous criminal organisation. They are known for both their horrific crimes and charitable deeds. Some examples of this are the aid they gave to the public after the 1995 and 2011 earthquake. They even give sweets out to children on Halloween. Many people also see the Yakuza as a necessary evil and believe their presence lowers the crime rate. This is part of the reason it's so hard to get rid of the Yakuza. They may be around for a long time. 